Welcome. I'm Sister Who. Today I just wanted to offer a few comments, a few reflections, if you will, on the subject of truth, which is a subject that's been debated and described for thousands of years. So I don't imagine we're going to answer anything, uh, especially within the next half hour here on the show, but perhaps we can provide a little food for thought that might be helpful to you. I'm rather fond of the biblical verse that says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The, Because it does seem again and again that that which is truth has this effect of somehow empowering and liberating in our lives. Uh, even if it's the truth of a negative circumstance, it gives us a clearer picture of what it is we're dealing with and, and what we might do in response to that. It moves us to uh, a firmer ground, if you will, to stand on, uh, from which to take our next step. The thing I noticed in my ponderings of truth is that it's contextual. What's true for one person isn't necessarily true for another. And that tells me that the truth somehow comes from that context, that it's true because of this or that circumstance or characteristic. The in that sense, uh, truth is something we discover. It's, in my opinion, not necessarily something, not so much something we create as that we discover. So that when we're searching for truth, we might, for example, look at the circumstances and then look at what is happening within those circumstances because of the characteristics of those circumstances. When we initially come to a situation, though, we don't necessarily know what the circumstances are or what effect it's having. If you looked at a picture of a room, for example, it might look like a perfectly nice place to be until someone informed you that the whole room had been sealed and all the air had been pumped out and there was a vacuum in there so that there wasn't enough oxygen to keep a person alive for more than 30 seconds. It would look the same but there would be an invisible truth that would make the life of a human being within that context uh, difficult, if not impossible. And you might look at another photo of a different room that would look exactly the same, but from which the air had not been pumped out, and it would be a perfectly safe place for people to be, because the thing that creates the truth of danger or safety in that circumstance is not something that can be measured by our physical eyes. It's something that's visible. It's something that needs to be measured in other ways. At one time, uh, in the well, the difference, I guess, between personal truth and societal truth. For individuals discovering circumstances, they might find certain things to be true. Uh, for myself, discovering the fact that I was a gay man, it was a question of looking in the mirror and pondering and reflecting on what was going through my mind and my heart and what made sense to me and how everything worked for me in this relational sense and finding that when I accepted um, an orientation of, uh, of being gay as being true for me, a whole lot of other things made sense and I was able to relate to life in a much more constructive, much better way, able to relate to myself in a much better way. There are a lot of different things, though, way beyond orientation, though, that come down to the area of personal truth. Uh, personal truth could even be whether someone is right or left-handed. At one time, society uh, in many places around the world, uh, but especially in the United States, had a belief that there was something wrong with being left-handed, that everyone should be right-handed. So in terms of which hand they write their name with, which hand they do most activities with. Children who discovered that they were left-handed uh, never made a choice to be left-handed. They just discovered that's what worked for them. It had something to do with the way the brain was shaped, I guess. They discovered that, but at one time, such children would be punished, reprimanded, coerced, whatever they could do to try to make them into right-handed people. And for some of these children, it created a lot of psychological and emotional problems because they were not allowed to be who and what they were 
in whatever way they found most effective. It was a discovery that they, I'm left-handed. I, I didn't choose to be left-handed. I, you know, in in my case, I, I think I'm right-handed, but I tend to be ambidextrous sometimes. So, uh, where I can I can sign my name with either hand, but of course it looks completely different depending on which hand I use. Um, the in, in trying to that's the personal level of discovery that frequently comes through reflection, through looking in the mirror, through keeping a journal to see how I behave in these sorts of circumstances, what is true for me within these circumstances. When I go into this circumstance, do I feel what everyone else says they feel? And if the truth is, I don't feel that way, then that's something I need to address in a constructive fashion rather than trying to censor myself, trying to hide the fact that I'm different or something. Because I think the differences and uniquenesses that are within each person were put there uh, by God or the universe or whatever higher power you want to describe. The fact that they're there to me says that there is some way in which they're intended to be good. That there's some way in which that characteristic can contribute to life. That there are things that left-handed people will be able to do or say or ways that they have of dealing with life that could be somehow instructive if we gave it a little more thought and paid attention to what it was to what that circumstance was trying to tell us or some of the things that circumstance could tell us maybe that's a better way of putting it 